You ready to roll? You ready to roll? Yep. Hi, it's Ombra, the Winds Lodge Prefect at the Grace School of Wizardry, and I am here again for another exciting episode of What's Going On in the Winds Lodge. And today I present uh, part three of our January offering, wherein we are going to review the, the Christmas movies that we that we watched in December. At the end of January, you know, I thought maybe we were done with Christmas, but apparently we aren't. Um, <laughs> so yes, I'm here today with my my two the two magical entities that live with me, and they're always so excited to participate. Right? Great. Okay, yes, they are. They, they, they truly are. So let's get right down to business. The first movie that we watched was called Rare Exports. And we watched this, uh, remember what day we watched this on? Something? Krampus Day. Krampus Day, which yeah. is December 6th. So can you tell me a little bit about the plot? Humans dug up Krampus slash Santa's grave. They were digging up Santa's grave, yes. What did you think? It was scary. It was scary. It was really scary. I yeah. thought it was heartwarming. What? What? I mean, well, the ending. It was a horror comedy. It it, 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 it can't. Okay, listen. Horror comedy is still com uh, horror. It might have comedy, but it's still horror. You know, these these guys are. In my they're afraid of things that go bump in the night. <sighs> I'm, I'm the wrong person for them to live with. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so this is a, it's actually a foreign language movie, but there is some English in it because the, the bad guys in the, the movie are Americans, so the Americans do speak English. And I will say, if you're going to, to watch it, the only people that are, are hurt or killed are the, the evil Americans. Um, and poor <laughs> unfortunate deer. Well, yeah, yeah they're animals are... You know, but the guy isn't he like a butcher? Like he, that's that, that's how they make their money is with the deer supply. But the foreign. All right, all right, all right. But um, yeah. So the, yeah, the evil Americans are digging up Santa's grave. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it's not really it's Santa. It's it's Krampus. And if you don't know uh, who Krampus is, he's sort of like the, the dark shadow side of, of Santa. He, instead of bringing good boys and girls gifts, he punishes them. So he comes and he delivers spankings or sometimes he abducts them. So he's kind of a scary looking creature. Do you remember what he looked like? I mean, he was frozen in ice, but he looked, I can remember it. He had like enough. two really big horns. Kind of like, yes, we're, yeah. not, we're not doing this right now. <laughs> attention, attention. Um, and let me turn it off. Yes, we're not playing with electronic devices. We're not playing with our iPads while we record this on our iPad. <laughs> yeah. So one of the, the interesting things I found out when I was, I was looking up the lore on the Krampus is there's actually traditional holiday cards that were made that featured the Krampus on them. So you would actually exchange, exchange greeting cards with this scary creature, the Krampus, on, on it. What do you think of that? No, thanks. If you send me a card like that in the future, I will burn it. Oh. Okay. But, you know, I was thinking that was like so fascinating to me and I had back in back in December I always try to, you know, give a, a variety of really very different challenges. And for the art challenge I, you know, said something revolving around the theme of light. And I wish I'd known about this before because I totally would have had a challenge that you would make a Krampus card. I would so totally have loved to see that. But um, but it, it had a, a it had a funny ending, right? I mean, these guys told me they. I mean, they were crying in the middle of the movie, going, "You ruined Christmas." You. Were... Uh, that was more Dave than me. That was that was you. No, you said you said it first. You said it first, and I said, "Yeah, you kind of did." Oh, maybe oh, I forget. But it it actually does have a happy ending and a humorous ending, and so. I have a friend who, who loves to watch it every, every year with her son, they, they watch it. So this is, it's not really this, this horrible, scary movie that, that these two thought it was. 
So the second movie, it was it was the movie that I, I one of the movies I promised that I was was going to review, but I couldn't talk these two into watching it. Was the movie Krampus, and I can't ask them to explain the plot because they didn't watch it. So it's basically a, a family that comes together at at Christmas, and it's it's like it's like the two sides of the family that don't get along, and they they come together and they they argue and they fight, and because they fight, you know the it eventually leads to the, the visit from Krampus because, you know, he, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. And these, these people are not very nice to each other when they're awake. But this, the scariest thing I found about the, this movie was actually not Krampus. It was, you know, I, 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 found, I found it kind of emotionally triggering seeing how these, this family uh, interacted with each other. Because I think we've all had those moments, you know, around the, the Thanksgiving dinner where we're, you know, we have relatives that we really disagree with on um, really some really hot topics. And I thought you could... What are you two doing? I tried to pull it back into frame. Um, so I, I thought, you know, as I'm watching it, I'm thinking I could create like a, a family holiday gathering bingo card with all the, the possible... Uh, nasty things people say to each other to, to me that that human part of it was like the scarier than the the Krampus part and I got to thinking you know what does that have to do with wizardry well we have a whole department called Lifeways that actually deals with human interactions and how to do that you know in a, in a positive way so that is that is important and we'll get to talk about that a little bit more when we get to our next movie, which is supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be a nice family children's movie, Rudolph, but there's some dark themes in that, too. Um, but getting back to Krampus, you know, this features, it has toys that come to life, but they're, they're really scary. And to me, after, you know, watching this and then watching, like, the toys that come to life in Rudolph is like, hmm, you know, it's like who, toys coming to life can actually be, uh, kind of a scary idea. And the ending on it, I don't know, I mean, it's sort of a happy ending, but there's sort of this, like, Charles Dickens Christmas Carol sort of aspect to the, the end of it, but there was sort of like, did it happen, didn't happen. I found the ending to be entirely unsatisfactory because I thought that the ending they were building up to would be, you know, kind of a positive message about how this family that doesn't get along, they go through this harrowing experience with this bad guy, and maybe as a result, they come together and they like each other. And it wasn't exactly what happened. And I, I really thought they were gearing up to that because the one boy in the family wrote this sincere wish list to Santa about how he'd like to see his family get along better. So I thought, that's where this movie's going. I hope that's where this movie's going. It isn't exactly where it went. So I felt that was a real... Uh, missed opportunity there. Moving on to Rudolph. And this is where we, you know, we have to make the, the case to YouTube that this video isn't aimed for the under 13 crowd. So we are going to talk about the dark side of Rudolph. Okay, so what was the plot of Rudolph? Um, nobody accepted him because he had a red glowing nose. Yes. <clears throat> and then what happened? Uh, there was also the elf dude that wanted to be a dentist. Yes. And um, there's a jerk Santa. Yes, Santa was a real jerk. Why was Santa a jerk? Like, he, first off, the, the elves, they worked on this song and he did not appreciate it whatsoever. Yeah, he, he was totally bored. And, um, you know, and also, it felt like he. He really didn't accept Rudolph until he kind of had a use for him, so it felt like there was an element of exploitation there. I, yeah, and so I, I didn't like the fact that he didn't encourage the, the elf who wanted to be a dentist, you know. It's, you know, follow your passion. There's probably more money in dentistry than there is in toy making, but what do I know? <laughs> but, so he's... It's it's interesting because uh, we have a, a class in in the grade school called Santa Claus, a global wizard. It is in the, the department of wizardry. It's taught by Professor Xenia, and I was thinking, you know, Santa's supposed to be a, a, a wizard. He's in the way he's portrayed in Rudolph. He's not a particularly wise wizard, but some some other some other dark things uh, themes in in Rudolph was the, the elf who wants to be a dentist. Do you remember his name? 
I do not. I can't remember. Do you think? Do you think Alexa knows his name? I don't know if she would. Alexa, what's the what what's the name of the elf I, elf in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Could you say that again? <laughs> Alexa, what was the name of the elf in the movie Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? This one is played by Lisa Clark in the 1998 film Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Okay, we have two Alexas that are going off. What did she say? Was it? Dixon or Vixen? What was Dixon? it? So Dixon? They said... It said, like, the guy who voiced him, I believe. Not that was the guy who voiced him? Maybe, Is I don't that know. what she said? I don't know. She said, I don't know. We could who probably, plays the elf in the... Yeah. We could probably Google it and append it on the end of this. Okay. But, yeah, we have two two Alexas. They're, like, in, in stereo, and they're, like, a half a second behind each other. <laughs> it's kind of hard to understand what they're saying. But... He's, they show him, he's working on this doll, he has a hammer, and he's hammering on her teeth and saying, oh, don't worry, this won't hurt a bit. And you're thinking, no, it won't hurt, because it's a doll, and then you go to the Isle of Misfit Toys, and the, and the, the dolls are alive, and you go, oh, yeah, so if you have any fears about going to the dentist, this is probably not the movie or that you should be seeing. But, uh, so there's a number of, like, magical creatures that are featured in this in this movie, uh, the elves uh, themselves they're they're magical creatures. There's um, an appearance by the abominable snowman, and also at the um, the Isle of Misfit Toys, the uh, the person or the the entity that oversees that island is his name is Moonracer, and he is a he's a flying lion. And do you know in mythology what the lion with wings is? A griffin? A griffin! Oh my gosh, you actually knew this. I'm ah, I knew it, but you I just it? thought it was a, a a lion and an eagle combined. Yeah, but that's that's kind of what he's he's portrayed as. And so if you're interested, you know, in these type of magical creatures, uh, we have a number of departments that uh, kind of address those. Uh, the Beast Mastery Department deals with issues of, of cryptozoology, so things like the the Yeti or the Abominable Snowman, uh, that would fall into the category of cryptozoology. Uh, like the Griffin, that would be more like the um, the Department of Lore, if you were interested in, in that that kind of thing. Uh, if you're interested in elves or, or dealing with the Fae, we have a number of classes uh, across different departments uh, on dealing with the Fae also. But the interesting thing, um, so I wanted to discuss with these two because they, I always want their opinions on things. Okay, the Yeti, the Abominable Snowman. Now that is sort of kind of similar in nature to Bigfoot, only the Yeti is so more like in the, the Himalayas. Now do you think creatures like this exist or that they could exist? Yes. Yes. Maybe. Maybe once a long time ago, and they could be a dinosaur, but not today, because there's not a lot to eat up there. So to think about an abominable snowman being that large and having and finding something to eat to sustain that body mass. Okay, Deanna, I'm pretty sure she didn't want you to get so technical. No, no, I'm, I'm really interested, because, you know, people have some kind of strong uh, opinions on this. And What about Bigfoot? Since I we're guess, going down there. Like, it, like, it could be just like a bear that's a bit more evolved. It, it, it could be something that people are miss seeing. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, I, I did look up some of the lore on the Abominable Snowman, and I, I didn't find any of it particularly convincing. Uh, people have found relics that have been tested, and they turn out to be either human or some other animal. And, you know, the, the footprints uh, have been matched to other kinds of animals. But compared to, like, say, Bigfoot, I felt that in some ways the Abominable Snowman was a little bit more feasible in, in theory. Because to me, when I think of Bigfoot, I'm thinking something that large in a, a relatively populated area. I mean, he is seen like in, in the woods out, out west. It's, it's certainly uh, less populated than the big cities. But there's still a lot of people who live in that area relative to, to the, the Himalayan mountains. Like, there, there's no one up there. So it just seems to me that if there was going to be a species that would be kind of hidden, that would be 
more likely to me. But still, I haven't found the stories to be particularly convincing. Now, the um, the idea of whether Bigfoot is real or any of these kind of uh, these kind of entities are, are real. Um, I came across this issue when I was I was researching one of the um, it was for it was for one of the uncommon magical pests class, and it, it explored the idea of um, vortexes and how some of these beings are seen more frequently around vortexes, and it could be that you know different entities or even like UFOs can come through in, in these type of areas. We visited some of those areas, right? Do you remember the, one of the vortexes we visited? Um, the one where you climbed the rock? Yeah, Sedona. That's the only one I know. Okay. So, but we were also like, we were in the, the Rocky Mountains and... Uh, there's, there's a vortex up there? Well, mountains in, in general can be kind of mystical places. I think you, you see more Bigfoot sightings around, like, Mount Shasta. Like, I think that's in more, I think, the, the Cascades. I'd have to look that up, but I, I believe that's, yeah. But one of the, the ideas that I, I had was in some of these areas that are vortexes that that kind of energy has an effect on people who visit it. And I wondered if that could change your perception such that you might see things that other people don't see. And of course, then the question becomes, do you have this ability to see something that's there or did it cause you to hallucinate? And I think that's an open question. It's open to debate. And I will just leave you with that idea. Um, okay, we'll move on to our last, our last movie. The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. This was a really bizarre movie. Can you explain the plot? Uh, mortal baby. Um, uh, found in the woods. And so the immortals take it in. And then when he grows up, he kind of has to go out of the woods. And then he goes and helps the mortals and kids who are suffering. And delivers some toys. And then there's these, like, weird bad guys who don't want kids to be happy. Yeah, so would you say he's more of the personification of the wise wizard? Yeah. So what kind of wise ideas do he have? Uh, Good boys. But did, he was more into like the power of love, right? Yeah. I think that was a, a big theme with that. And I thought the, you know, the immortals who found him were kind of interesting because they were all nature spirits of, of sorts. I, I particularly like the wind demon, you know, because I'm, you know, wind's lodged. But uh, what's interesting is that that class we have on um, Santa Claus the Global Wizard, one of the lessons is, um, is about the magic of love. Now I will, like full disclosure, I have not taken this class, but I think I can, you know, kind of get a, a sense, you know, if, if the lesson is called The Magic of Love, this might resonate more with the theme of this particular movie. And some other things that, that came up, um, they mentioned uh, Santa being the patron saint of children. Well, if you look up St. Nicholas, that is true. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of children. And it came up with, I discovered something really rather alarming about St. Nicholas. I looked up, you look alarmed. Um, <laughs> I looked up it. Well, it it said right on the right on right on Wikipedia. Uh, what his feast today was. Now, what do you think Saint Nicholas's feast day is? Today? No, it was December sixth. Do you remember what December sixth was? Krampus day. Krampus day. So this is where um, you know this is the really kind of one of the the dark themes we're going to discuss is um. I'm about to reveal to you uh, the, the truth about Santa, which is always a very controversial thing to do. Santa is Krampus. Is that's that's the truth, and he sees you when you're sleeping. <laughs> well, we have to make this this not entirely family friendly, uh, but uh, so that really sums up our sums up our, our movie reviews. What 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 was your favorite, do you think? Uh, Rudolph. Rudolph. I mean, The Life of the Avengers of Santa Claus was good and all, but 
I mean, it was, it was kind of weird, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, it was kind of weird. And then... Rare Exports. You liked Rare... So you did kind of like Rare Exports. Oh, uh, no, no, no. No. I hated it. No. The only thing I liked was when they were eating cookies. They were yeah. just like the only yeah. thing. The only thing. I don't even remember them eating the cookies. Remember? They were sitting on the stairs. Christmas cookies while there was a Santa just swinging by. Oh, that was funny, yeah, when the Santa was That was, was the only swinging. time I laughed during that movie. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was yes. <laughs> one of them. <clears throat> but he actually wasn't Santa, though. He was one of the elves. I don't yeah. care. He but, yes, yeah, like so he was just, yes, yeah, swinging, watching them eating the Christmas cookies. That was yeah. funny, yeah. It was very disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna think about it. But like Rudolph, do you do you think that that movie has stood the test of time? What do you mean? Do you, yeah. think, do you think audiences today like appreciate it more or less than like say less, this, less, this less. people in the seventies? Because back in the seventies, we thought it was awesome, and now as an adult, I watch it and I go, hmm. "Wait, you said we were you born during the seventies?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, you were? Mm -hmm. I thought you were born in the 80s. No, <laughs> no. It was very early 70s, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. But then wasn't there like the one scene when they said, oh, we have to get the the women back to, what was it, Christmas Village or whatever that was called? Like, we have to protect the women. So, yeah, I don't know that that movie's really stood the, the test of time all that well. All right, so what are we left with? Um, so now finishing off our, our January videos, and like I said, my house elves are, are wilting. They're <laughs> one is dead. One is dead. One is escaping. <laughs> I'm working so slowly. The whole video to work my way out of this. All right. I moved too slowly. All right, but they are going to help me more. I'm, I have to work on them. Um, planning our in bulk video we do have our, our virtual in bulk conclave coming up on second life that is uh, coming up on february 1st we will be submitting a video and i'm trying to you know consider what what do i want to do for that and i'm just looking over my my notes for when i took the wheel of the year class for it was uh yule and in bulk and i did a project um, involving like spring cleaning and we cleaned the whole kitchen and that was actually when I when I sorted out our big spice rack, and you can see how organized that has remained since I've done it, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah, so spring cleaning is probably something I really need to put a, a lot more effort into, <laughs> would you say? I, I think you guys could help out with that. That's what house elves are for. Can we clean it in the summer? When no, that it kind of defeats the purpose well, of spring. Well, the point of spring cleaning for kids is that they have school and don't want to do it. Um, nobody ever wants to, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> no, nobody I ever wants. I actually like to clean if I'm in the mood. Um, but it, it, this actually does have magical implications because, you know, space cleansing, you know, cleansing your magical area, area, your working space, your, you know, cleansing your, your aura and yourself. It's, it's actually a, a good part of defensive magic. And it's, it's not something that people generally put enough emphasis on. There's like, you know, no, no such thing as, is too much because you don't ever want to get to the point where you have to go beyond cleansing to, to banishing. And I, I know that from, from experience. So, <laughs> what have you banished? Well, there was an, an incident. I mean, like a couple couple of years ago, it was it was for the basic banishing class where, you know, I do like the basic cleansings and, and all that, like, you know, the general protective, like low level protective stuff. But one of the projects, uh, one of the assignments, called for like a really deep cleaning, like where you're scrubbing the walls and scrubbing the floor. And it really, it can stir up a, a lot of residue because, you know, when you think of all the, the incense and the candles you burn for various in, intentions and, you know, the, the soot settles into to everywhere. And at the time, I was also, I was working with the Fae, I was working with the ancestors, I was doing some chaos magic and had a, a sigil charging on my altar. 
and I it was you know and it was at Halloween. So this is a perfect storm to like stir up all that magical residue that had not been deep cleaned. And you know there were some explosive things that that happened down there, and I even needed to to reach out to our esteemed professor and Dean Shadow Fox who kind of helped me me through that. Explosive? Yeah, you weren't down there when it happened. Well, what happened? What do you mean exploded? Like there was her fire? Was there smoke? Did it just no. fly everywhere? And what caused it? Well, that's, you know, that's kind of an open question. But, uh... <laughs> some things are, are better off if you don't know. But anyway, so, you know, I'm just thinking of some projects. But I was trying to think of some projects that these two could could help me with. Like, you could make a Bridget's Cross out of rushes. I don't know where we'd find rushes. Um, there was, well, your sister's been doing some projects with the, um, with artwork with the pistachio shells. And I thought no. that might be some, I had some interesting altar decorations ideas for that. Why can we do that? No, I'm, I'm, I haven't decided anything yet. Um, but that. when I did, when I did the Wheel of the Year, it's like one of the things you had to do like a, a cleansing, purifying bath. And I, I think right, right around that time I was also taking the, the, the cleansing and purification class. So it's like about adding, um, different, uh, cleansing herbs to the bath water and, and burning certain kinds of incense in the room. And it all went well and good until I, I opened the door of the bathroom and all that incense went rushing out and set off the, the smoke detector. And that was a, a fun time for the entire family. So, so we might revisit that, um, idea. I, I really haven't decided. So if, if anybody has any ideas, let me know if you have any ideas. We're always, uh, eager to see other, uh, apprentices participating especially if you are in the winds lodge we get merits for it and if you're not in the winds lodge you know, just just forget about it I, i'm joking we do like to see participation from all of our apprentices and uh i i hope that that you will show up for our involved conclave i say i look forward to seeing you there but i can't always get into second life so wishing you the best wishing you uh the, a, a blessed, a blessed, blessed in bulk to be, and a very, very blessed, blessed be. be.